Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today we will learn about the anatomy of the right atrium of human heart. The word atrium means it is the upper chamber of the heart through which blood enters the ventricles of the heart. There are two atria in the human heart. The left atrium receives blood from the pulmonary or lung circulation and the right atrium receives blood from the vena cava or venous circulation. In order to learn more about right atrium, let's get started. In this video, I will be enumerating an introduction about the right atrium. We will talk about the external features, tributaries of right atrium, right atrioventricular orifice, internal features which comprises smooth posterior part, rough anterior part and also interatrial septum. Introduction The right atrium is the right upper chamber of the heart. It receives venous blood from the whole body and pumps it into the right ventricle through the right atrioventricular or also known as tricuspid opening. It forms the right border part of the upper border, the sternocostal surface and the base of the heart. External features Number 1. The chamber is elongated vertically, receiving the superior vena cava at the upper end and the inferior vena cava at the lower end. Here you can appreciate the superior vena cava at the upper end and this is the inferior vena cava at the lower end. Number 2. The upper end is prolonged to the left to form the right auricle. As you can see here, this is the left auricle and this right here is the right auricle. The auricle covers the root of the ascending iota and partly overlaps the infundibulum of the right ventricle. This right here is the iota. Its margins are notched and the interior is sponge-like which prevents the free flow of the blood. So in order to have a rough idea, let's explain the whole diagram. This right here is the right brachiocephalic vein which is a branch of superior vena cava. This right here is the left common carotid artery. This is the left subclavian artery and this branch is nothing but the left brachiocephalic vein. Right here you can appreciate the left pulmonary artery. This is the left auricle. This is the right auricle and this is the left border. This is the left ventricle and this right here is the right ventricle. This is the apex of the heart and this is nothing but the inferior border. This is the right atrium which we are studying. Number 3. Along the right border of the atrium there is a shallow vertical groove which passes from the superior vena cava above to the inferior vena cava below. This groove is called the sulcus terminalis. It is produced by an internal muscular ridge called the crista terminalis. Also, the upper part of the sulcus contains the sinoatrial or SA node which acts as the pacemaker of the heart. Number 4. The right atrioventricular groove separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. It is more or less vertical and lodges the right coronary artery and the small cardiac vein. Tributaries or inlets of the right atrium. In this we have 
द सुपीरियर वीना कावा द इनफीरियर वीना कावा द कोरोनरी साइनस राइट हियर एंटीरियर कार्डियक वेन्स वीने कोडे मिनिमे और आल्सो नोन एस टेबेशन वेन्स एंड आल्सो नंबर सिक्स समटाइम्स द राइट मार्जिन right atrioventricular orifice blood passes out of the right atrium through the right atrioventricular or tricuspid orifice and goes to the right ventricle the tricuspid orifice is guarded by the tricuspid valve which maintains the unidirectional flow of the blood internal features The interior of the right atrium can be broadly divided into the following three parts. Before moving on to that, let's see. Let's have an idea about this diagram. So, as I told, this is the superior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava. This is the opening of coronary sinus. This is fossa ovalis, and this is the crista terminalis, which I told before. and these are nothing but the right pulmonary veins this right here is the right auricle covering the ascending aorta this is the pulmonary trunk now let's move on so as i told the interior of the right atrium can be broadly divided into the following three parts which are the smooth posterior part or sinus venarum number 1 Developmentally it is derived from the right horn of sinus venosus. Number 2. Most of the tributaries except the anterior cardiac veins open into it. A. The superior vena cava opens at the upper end right here. The inferior vena cava opens at the lower end right here. The opening is guarded by a rudimentary valve of the inferior vena cava or eustachian valve which comes approximately here during embryonic life the valve guides the inferior vena caval blood to the left atrium through the foramen ovale right here the coronary sinus opens between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the right atrioventricular orifice the opening is guarded by the valve of the coronary sinus or tibetan valve to have a better look this is the opening of the coronary sinus and this right here is the valve of coronary sinus and this right here is the valve of inferior vena cava this right here is the fossa ovaris let's move on the intracranial tubercle of lower is a very small projection scarcely visible on the posterior wall of the atrium just below the opening of the superior vena cava during embryonic life it directs the superior caval blood to the right ventricle next is the rough anterior part or pectinate part number 1 developmentally it is derived from the primitive atrial chamber number 2 it presents a series of transverse muscular ridges called musculi pectini you can appreciate it right here they arise from crista terminalis right here and run forwards and downwards to the atrioventricular orifice giving the appearance of the teeth of a comb in the auricle the muscles are interconnected to form a reticular network next is the interatrial septum developmentally it is derived from the septum primum and septum secundum it presents 
The fossa oval is a shallow saucer shaped depression in the lower part. The fossa represents the site of embryonic septum primum. Number 3. The annulus ovalis or limbus fossa ovalis is the prominent margin of the fossa ovalis. It represents the lower free edge of septum secundum. It is distinct above and at the sides of the fossa ovalis but is deficient inferiorly. Its anterior edge is continuous with the left end of the valve of the inferior vena cava. The remains of the foramen ovale are occasionally present. This is a small slit-like valvular opening between the upper part of the fossa and the limbus. It is normally occluded after birth but sometimes it may persist. So this right here is the interatrial septum. This is the left atrial wall. This is the right atrial wall. This is the tricuspid valve. This is the mitral valve. And this right here is the apex of the heart. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.